Well, hi everybody. Good Friday evening to you and welcome to the end of the road for the first round of the softball playoffs as the Travis Tigers facing elimination tonight against the Seven Lakes Lady Spartans are going to take each other on at a beautiful neutral site. It's here at Cy Woods High School. We have a field turf surface and it's not even raining right now. So I'm thinking we got a good shot at getting game two in and of course if Travis is to advance to the second round of the playoffs, they're going to have to get to game three and then win it. And game three will be right here at Cy Woods if Travis can push it that far. Our coverage on VipeFortBend.com is brought to you tonight by Xfinity, the future of awesome, and also by First Tire and Automotive, which has four great locations, including the one in Katy Cinco Ranch. So we know we're going to have some folks here listening from Seven Lakes. We appreciate that. And you know, we are kind of Fort Bend centric, but we make sure that we honor everybody's great pride and devotion to their schools, their teams, their teammates, and their communities. You'll enjoy what you hear tonight. It's gonna to be exciting. Looks like we're gonna have good weather and the Travis girls are going out on the field. I think they're going to be the home team. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid, or two kids, or three kids. Especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. First Tire and Automotive will shower you in savings in April. Make sure you're not caught saying the wrong S word when it starts raining because you can't see out of your windshield. Safety first to get you to and from the big game. Check out these great savings. Wiper blades, buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free on select contour beam windshield wipers. Purchase four select BF Goodrich, Goodyear, General, or Uniroyal tires with a premium installation package and wheel alignment and save $100. First Town Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTironAuto.com. You don't have to wait. We are ready to play ball. Travis is the home team. Rachel Ibarra in the pitcher's circle to start the game, and she will pitch to Mackenzie Stutz. The shortstop for Seven Lakes, and the first pitch is over but low. Ball one. After Stutz, it's Emma Wingate who catches, and then Amy Abke, who's pitching for Seven Lakes. Then Becca Rabe, she is, I'm sorry, Becky Rabe. Second pitch is, I'm going to say in the dirt, out of habit, but it's not dirt. It's field turf that's dark brown that looks like dirt. So Becca Rabe will bat fourth, and she plays first base. Emily Johnson is in right field and will bat fifth. Ashley Abel, playing third base, will bat sixth. Next pitch by Ibarra. And Stutz takes high, and the count is 3-0. and Then the 7-8-9 hitters, Haley Welch, Cecilia Sauer, and Megan Kelly. Yeah, Megan Kelly. And the fourth pitch of the at-bat. Well, I guess it turns out not to be so much an at-bat, but a plate appearance. It's low for ball four. We weren't sure when this one was going to start because Cy Woods had to finish off a playoff series, a Region 2 by District Affair with Klein Oak. Here's the first pitch to Emma Wingate, and it's in there for a strike. The Travis girls wearing the bright red pants and the white jersey tops with tigers in red letters outlined in black across the front. There's the pitch that is fouled over on the right. Cy Fair ISD's Cy Woods High School. 
that's where we are and it really looks nice. By the way, Ariel Kowalewski, who plays third base for Travis, is in. She was in a lot tighter on the previous pitch. Swung on and missed. First base is occupied, so there's no way that Wingate can go on down to first base. So now it's Amy Abke. By the way, I really appreciate Katie Spencer, head coach at Seven Lakes, for giving me pronunciation guide. It's very important. There's a pitch outside to Abke. It's ball one and a quick throw down to first base. But easily getting back in was Stutz. Here's the pitch to Abke, swung on and missed again. Another throw down to first, but Stutz gets back in. Seven Lakes has the Astros colors, navy blue with the orange, and they're wearing the road grays in this game too. Travis must win to keep the series alive. There's a ground ball to shortstop, could be two. One out at first, not in time for the double play. Abke reaches on a fielder's choice but beautifully handled there by the Travis infield. Lauren Garza making the play. So two outs and now it's Becca Raby. Where's number 13, right-handed hitter. Open stance, swings at the first pitch and she was a little late on that one and fouled it off to the right. In game one, Seven Legs prevailed three to nothing. They got two runs in the third, added one later on, and Travis just never got the bats going. There's a pitch that is, again, I'm not gonna say in the dirt if I can avoid it, but it's just a habit. We have some numbers on what happened in game one and we'll kind of weave those into the broadcast there's a slow roller back to Ibarra she's going to throw to first and that'll do it Travis gives up no runs no hits no errors and one runner left on base we'll continue on vipefortbend.com to the bottom of the first no score GetAgreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAgreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max, and OfficeDepot.com. Welcome back. We want to thank the folks at Office Depot and Sugarland Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace for helping us take care of business all year long. And here we go with the Travis lineup. Ariel Kowalewski, left-handed hitter, stands in and the opposing pitcher Amy Abke for Seven Lakes. Kowalewski just a sophomore and here's the pitch by Abke that's outside for a ball. Travis tied for first in District 26A with the George Ranch Longhorns a team with whom they split the two game season series and Kowalewski a little blooper behind second and it drops in. You know if you're Travis you're looking for good omens and that looks like a good one right there. So quickly one for one and now Riley Westmoreland who plays left field 
for the Travis Tiger girls, also a left-handed hitter. Abke spinning the ball, now pitching, and a bunt attempt on the left side, and it bounces once into the lap of Katie Spencer, head coach for Seven Lakes. She's been there 10 years, and she's very friendly, very helpful. She made a very good impression on me. Now Abke brings the next one. Westmoreland runs toward it, but does not swing. And it's a ball high. Abke again spinning it, now brings it. And that's low for a ball. So Travis with a very good chance to get two runners on immediately. Here's the pitch, Westmoreland takes. And that's inside, so they're not giving us the count. So I thought it was 3-0. and The umpire doesn't make very clear strike signals. It's now, it was 2-1, and one. now it's 3-1. and one. Pitch on the way. And sliced into foul ground on the left and rattling all the way down the fence. The Ridge Point Panther girls lost in their game one against Tompkins, so they're fighting for their playoff lives tonight. So also is Austin. Pitch to Westmoreland, she swings, has popped up and caught by the catcher. Easy play for Emma Wingate, there's one down. Another left-handed hitter and it's Kennedy Clark who is the catcher for the Tigers. She looks at the first pitch and it's right down the middle. The entire infield is the color of dark chocolate and they have beautiful stripes in the outfield. Nice cut by Clark on the one strike pitch, but she swings under it a little bit, fouls it back. And the count is nothing and two. Travis batting in the bottom of the first, no score. Abke brings it and that's a called strike three. Now Maddie Morris needs to come through, play second base for Travis and she's the first right-handed hitter in the Tigers lineup. Good crowd on hand for both sides and over to my right it's the Travis folks. They're closer to our broadcast center. Here's the first pitch and Morris takes a strike on the inside half. It's interesting uh, what was scheduled for tonight. Here's the pitch. And that's a slow roller towards shortstop. It's going to be trouble. Morris legging it out, and she's safe. Slow roller, Mackenzie Stutz was charging all the way. Abke came out of the pitcher's circle trying to make a play on it herself. But it was hit just slowly enough. So two hits in the inning, two runners on, and now it's Rachel Ibarra. She could really help herself out. Abke brings the first one, swung on and missed. Travis had only three hits in game one, so they've already got two. That pitch is high and it's one and one. Wind is present, it's not absolutely calm, but it's not a factor. If it's blowing at all, it's a little bit from right to left. There's a strike on the outside corner. One and two. The home plate umpire does do a great job of updating the count. Here it comes. That's outside, good eye by Rachel. By the way, we're thinking we might broadcast something tomorrow, but it's probably not softball. And fouled out of play to the left. Ibarra was way out in front on that one. So there is a scheduled game between Dulles and Ridgepoint, but it may not have any playoff implications for either of those baseball clubs. Ridgepoint's already in. Here's the pitch. 
And Ibarra sends it down the left field line, but it'll hang up and the ball is caught. And that will do it. Making the play over there was Megan Kelly. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. So those four great locations for First Tire and Auto, Greatwood, First Colony, Katie Cinco Ranch, and what I believe is the original location on Eldridge Road in Sugarland. I'm not really sure if you mail the letter to where we are right now, would it go to Houston or would it go to Cyprus? I really don't know. But it's a very, very nice facility. And it would be great to see the Travis Tigers baseball team come to the beautiful baseball park right behind us for a neutral game playoff. See, they're not going to face Cy Woods in Region 3. Cy Woods is now in Region 2. All right, here we go. Johnson up now for Seven Lakes. And she takes a pitch low for a ball. Emily Johnson. Rachel Ibarra brings it. That's yeah, a strike on the outside corner and a beautiful job of framing. You know, that's just part of the game. And Kennedy Clark might have made the difference with her, her actions there in getting the strike call. Here comes the next one. That's high and away. The Travis outfield plays Emily Johnson straight away. And she fouls it straight back. Two and two is the count on Emily Johnson. Last night she was one for three and drove in one of the three Seven Lakes runs. Ibarra brings it and she spiked that one. No way Johnson's gonna chase. By the way, uh, Emily, her uniform looks kind of like that of Craig Biggio with the Astro colors and she wears number seven. Ibarra brings it. Called strike three on the outside corner. Now it's Ashley Abel. She was also one for three last night. Right-handed swinger. She has some power. She stands near the front of the right-handed batter's box. Takes a rip at the first pitch and fouls it off of her leg. And it's nothing and one. Last night, Ibarra pitched six innings, threw 74 pitches, 84% of them for strikes. She gave up seven hits, three runs. Two came in the first. And one more came in the fourth. There's a pitch that is just low. It was right on top of the outside corner. Here's the pitch by Ibarra, swung on and missed. One and two. Ashley Abel ready, brings it, change up, swung on and down she goes.
Good crowd on hand here tonight, and we thought we might not even be playing this game until about 9 o'clock, but Cy Woods won its game two over Klein Oak, and so we got to start just a little after 7. There's a bunt attempt, but it's going to spin foul. Haley Welch. Haley Welch was one for two and drove in one of the runs. She's near the front of the right-handed batter's box. Shows bunt again. Everybody crashes from the corner infielders. She withdraws the bat. Didn't look like she withdrew it in time. And the Travis fans are upset. They think it should have been a strike. Now Ibarra brings it. And that is fouled on the ground. And Katie Spencer of Seven Lakes. I noticed nearly every third base coach be he he or be she she they usually do something you know reach down or get out of the way or kick it or something she just she didn't move at all there's a pitch down and away they could not get Haley Welch to chase open stance for Haley very close to the front of the box Ibarra delivers, and that's an easy grounder to second. This will end the inning. One, two, three inning for Rachel Ibarra, and she strikes out a pair of hitters for Seven Lakes. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com, going to the bottom of the second. No score between the Tigers and the Lady Spartans. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid, or two kids, or three kids. Especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Travis trying to break through on the scoreboard here as they bat in the bottom of the second. Here's the first pitch and is inside and low. Lauren Garza standing in, the sixth hitter in the order for Travis. Garza was 0 for 3 in game one, looks at that pitch and it's in there for a strike. She kind of shakes her right hand, now grips the bat. And she hits one deep to left field. That's got a chance. It is gone. <laughs> wow, the Travis fans and the players are super excited. It's a bomb, and now the Tigers are on top. So Lauren Garza gets the job done. Now Emily Camacho. It was right down the left field line, just flying parallel to the foul line and fair by about 15 feet. Camacho swings and misses at the initial pitch. Emily was one for three in game one. Pitch on the way, outside corner strike and it's nothing in two. Gab Key takes a quick look over to the dugout. Camacho open stance, back of the box. Chops one foul. Crashing in, was able to pick it up. Go, 
I had not set the Seven Lakes defense for you. I'll do that first chance I get. Camacho hits it high in the air. Looks like at the play of the second baseman, Welch. And there are two outs. Actually, just one. Sorry about that. Ashley Rojas. So you've got Wingate catching for Seven Lakes. Raby at first base. Welch at second. Stutz is the shortstop. Ashley Abel at third. In left field, it's Kelly. In center field, Uzoa. And in right field, Johnson. And now Katie Spencer has taken a moment to talk to all of her fielders. She'd called them all together in the middle of the circle. And I could only speculate about what she might be talking about. But I kind of think, you know, she might just be a little bit, uh, I don't know, she might be a little bit miffed that Ty, uh, Travis over-celebrated or something after that home run. She might have said something to her girls to try and get them fired up as there is a swing and a miss. Ashley Rojas. Steps out, now she's back in. Here's the pitch. And she hits it right toward our table, but fortunately they have the very sturdy net right in front of us. I would have caught that if it was necessary or possible. Next one on the way, change up, swung on, down goes Rojas. And that one hit the batter, that's Casey Perkins. And now back to the top of the order in Ariel Kowalewski. Pitch on the way, and that hit Kowalewski. And there are two runners on. Now, Riley Westmoreland. Riley last night was 0 for 2. After the leadoff homer in this frame, Travis has something going with two outs and the first pitch is outside to Westmoreland. She hit a foul pop-up to the catcher, Wingate, in inning number one. Abke ready, now brings it. Pitch is high. And the cheer you hear from the Travis fans is because somebody's dad went and got the home run ball. And I hope that it was uh, Lauren Garza's dad. There's a ground ball right back to Abke. She throws to first and the bottom of the second is over and done, but not before Travis gets on the board. They get the home run from Garza, and the Tigers lead it one to nothing in a game they have to win to continue their season. This is VibeFortBend.com. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid, or two kids, or three kids. Especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed.
Travis excited about being in the lead, but there is a long, long way to go in this one. All the Travis infielders plus Ibarra and also her catcher Clark in the pitcher's circle and ready to go here. <laughs> Cecilia Sauer. Right-handed hitter near the front of the box. Rachel starts her with a strike, fastball on the outside corner. Next one is swung on and coming up empty is Sauer. Clark sets up on the outside edge. Pitch is just a little cue shot over to the right and Camacho picks it up. Pitch on the way. Easy grounder to the third baseman, and Kowalewski throws her out. <clears throat> now it's going to be Megan Kelly, and then we'll go back to the top of the order and Mackenzie Stutz. Here's the pitch. Strike called on Kelly. Megan Kelly batting ninth tonight, but in game one, she hit in the two hole. And she sends one foul in the air. It'll go out of play on the right side. So if Travis can capture the win here in game two, we'll Stop our broadcast and start another one about 30 minutes after that. There's another strikeout for Ibarra. She's kind of racking those up now. Now back to the top with Mackenzie Stutz who drew a four pitch walk when she led off the game. Ibarra brings it. There's a strike. First one that she has seen from Ibarra. Ibarra already with three strikeouts. Brings it. Oh, and that's just outside. Couldn't have been more than the third, one third of the diameter of a ball outside the strike zone. Stutz ready. Takes one down and away. By the way, I'm not sure where McKenzie is going to go play college softball, but if she went to Sam Houston State, she'd be a Stutz Bearcat. And if you know automobile history in the United States of America, if you remember there was a Stutz Bearcat. Fly ball to left field, sinking and dropping. Stutz started to think about second, but she slipped as she came to a stop, and she gets up laughing, and now she's talking to one of the assistant coaches for Seven Lakes, and she reaches again, two for two, as Mackenzie Stutz. Actually, no, she walked the first time. She's one for one plus a walk. Emma Wingate, strikeout victim in inning number one. We're in the top of the third, one nothing Travis. Pitch is high. Wingate steps out and takes a really hard practice swing. Garza, I'm sorry, uh, Ibarra pitches and it's fouled off the net on the left side. Kowalewski comes and gets it. They have the big I'm going to say it's a uh, burgundy W for Cy Woods with Wildcats across the front. Beautiful decoration on the field in short center. And there's a foul tapped behind the home plate. 
And Ibarra is ahead one and two. Traffic really wasn't bad coming here tonight. I was so thankful. Here's a pitch, just missed the outside corner in the count two and two. For those of you who don't listen to softball very often, you don't take a lead off and you can't steal a base until the ball crosses home plate. Here's the pitch, Stutz makes a quick break but comes back and the count is now full. Rachel Ibarra continuing to work to Emma Wingate. Pitch on the way, swung on, there goes Stutz. No, I'm sorry, it was taken for a ball. And Stutz was gonna be at second anyway. So with two outs, Kennedy Clark goes out and talks to Ibarra for just a moment. And in the meantime, Katie Spencer, head coach of Seven Lakes, talks to her next hitter, Amy Abke. There's a pitch just outside. One and nothing. Ibarra just threw the remarkable 84% strikes in game one. Brings the next one. And that is lashed foul on the ground past third base. So Ibarra so far with four strikeouts and two walks, she's allowed one hit. Pitch to Abke, strike on the outside corner. We saw Stutz slip as she went back to first base and there's a foul out of play on the right. But of course, this is that beautifully engineered field turf. And you know, if just because it's wet doesn't mean you're gonna slip. You could slip on dry turf if the angle is right. And there's a ground ball into right field base hit. Here comes Stutz around first. She scores the tying run. Wingate is tagged out because she overran third. She's out to complete the inning. However, Seven Lakes scores a run to tie it up. We will go to the bottom of the third. It is Travis one and Seven Lakes one. First Town Automotive will shower you in savings in April. Make sure you're not caught saying the wrong S word when it starts raining because you can't see out of your windshield. Safety first to get you to and from the big game. Check out these great savings. Wiper blades, buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free on select contour beam windshield wipers. Purchase four select BF Goodrich, Goodyear, General, or Uniroyal tires with a premium installation package and wheel alignment and save $100. First Town Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vite Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. What a tough day it has been for head coach Katie Kilgore of Travis. You know, your team is down one to nothing. So when she and all the players and her staff woke up this morning, they thought they'd be playing at Travis at five o'clock, but here came the rain and it never let up. And so we had to move this game to Cy Woods and we didn't know if this game two would start at seven or at 9 p.m. But Cy Woods was playing in a game that started at five and they beat Klein Oak. So that finished that series and that's why we got to play before it got dark. High fly ball to right field, it's going back. Johnson chasing it at two hops the wall. 
That's going to be a double. Kennedy Clark. You know, there must be a wind blowing in pretty strong way up above the playing surface because that looked like it had a chance to go. It did one hop the wall, and I mean just barely. So Kennedy Clark has a chance to come around and score the go-ahead run. Travis got the homer from Garza to take the one nothing lead. Seven legs scored a run in the top of this third inning to tie it up. And here we go now with Maddie Morris. She tries to put down a butt and fouls it back. Morris, slightly open stance, pulls the bat back and it's high. Abke delivers. That's outside. And the scoreboard says two and one, but I'm not sure. Maybe she offered at the first pitch and it was a strike. And there's a bouncer right back to Abke, throws to first in time. And that moves the runner over to third and the runner at third is no longer Kennedy Clark. She's been replaced by courtesy runner Maria Reese. Here's the pitch by Abke, and a swing and a foul right back into the net by Ibarra. She hit a fly ball to left field her first time. Abke rocks and brings it down and in for a ball. There's a flag in straightaway center field. It's just barely moving. Ibarra takes a good hack, but she rips it foul over on the left side near the on-deck circle. There's a pitch. Just missed being a strike. Seven Legs fans think they should have had one there. It's two and two. Abke, who according to Game Changer, pitched two and one thirds innings last night, brings it. And that is back behind us, foul again. Rachel Ibarra came up with a chance to put her team ahead the first time when it was scoreless. And right now it's one to one. We have one out, bottom of the third. Abke brings it, and another good rip and a hack right back into the screen. Ibarra kind of leans into the strike zone. Takes one and it's downstairs. The count goes full three and two. Maria Reese is the courtesy runner at third, running for Clark. If she can get across, that would be the go ahead run. There's another foul ball. This could be a very long and exhausting night, mentally as well as physically. There's another foul ball, and Ibarra is making Abke work. Right. 
Here's the pitch. That is in the air, and that will almost reach the top of the backstop. Yet another foul back. Abke might soon start looking like Apollo Creed in the original Rocky. Wondering, what do I have to do to put this person away? Abke brings it. That's a called strike three on the inside corner, and Ibarra can't believe it. So now it's going to be up to Matty Morris. Correction, sorry about that. Lauren Garza. She had the homer before. Looks at the first one high and away for a ball. Morris was one for three in game one, so she is two for her last four. That's a called strike. This is the point in the game at which all the players need to realize how much, if any, the home plate umpire is expanding the zone. And that one is downstairs. Garza with the white batting gloves, ready for the delivery, and she hits it the other way, and it's going to twist foul out of play. Two and two count, two outs. Reese is the runner at third, and we have a 1-1 game. Travis in Seven Lakes, and Travis must win and push it to a game three, in which case we all need to get some coffee. There's a strike on the outside corner, and that ends the third inning. So Travis, no runs on one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. We'll proceed to the fourth. It's one-to-one, -one. Travis in Seven Lakes with the Tigers in a must-win situation on VipeFortBend.com. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid, or two kids, or three kids. Especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Coming up for Seven Lakes, it's Becca Raby, Emily Johnson, and Ashley Abel in a 1-1 game. Rachel Ibarra and the infielders who work behind her, also her catcher Kennedy Clark getting together before we launch the top of the, four, of the fourth inning. The Austin Bulldogs and the Ridgepoint Panther girls are in must-win situations tonight. We'll try to get you some information. There's a little tapper that goes foul. Kowalewski wisely lets it roll. That was just rolling so slowly. There wasn't going to be anything that she could do about it. Tompkins leads Ridgepoint 4-2 in the third inning. Tompkins beat the Lady Panthers 15 to five in their game one. Here's a pitch down and away for a ball. Raby one for three in game one. And she hits a slow roller and it's Camacho who backhands it, takes it to first herself. And Rachel Ibarra working very effectively. 
Raby now 0 for 2 on the evening. I hope we have some baseball games going on tonight as the first pitch is down and in to Emily Johnson. So you have the Clements Rangers are scheduled to play Bush. They're a prohibitive favorite. If Clements wins that one, then they are almost certainly in the playoffs without having to do anything additional, like an extension of the season. There's a foul by Johnson off the screen on the right side. Meanwhile, the Dulles Vikings, who have, they're near the end of a brutal stretch of six games in eight days, and they're just running out of pitching. Pitch to Johnson, and she lunges at it, and it's foul on the ground on the left. Bounces off the third base dugout where all the Seven Lakes girls are. I'd like to congratulate my good friend Chris O'Neill, longtime assistant baseball and football coach at Seven Lakes, who's now the head football coach at Toloso Midway for the next year. Ground ball to third, Kowalewski, quick release on the way and right on target, two outs. So good luck, Chris O'Neill. Toloso Midway is down near Corpus Christi. Here we go with the next one. It's a line drive to Kowalewski. That'll do it. And she threw to first just in case. And by the way, Ashley Abel, uh, we hardly knew you. One, two, three inning for Rachel Ibarra and the Travis Tigers will go to the bottom of the fourth. Travis one and Seven Lakes one. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid, or two kids, or three kids. Especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. One-to-one, -one, we start the bottom of the fourth. And it's Camacho, Rojas, and Perkins to bat for the Tigers. Facing elimination. And the first pitch is a ball. Abke massaging the softball, now brings it. That's a strike on the outside corner. And, you know, acknowledging it is Camacho. She's kind of nodding her head. Yeah, that was a strike. Good pitch. Abke brings the next one. And that is a line drive toward left field, but it hangs up and a nice catch. Kelly moved over to her left and made the play. Well, if anybody gets tired tonight, it'll be because it might be late if we go to a game three and it takes a long time, but it won't be because of heat or anything like that. Ashley Rojas now swings at the first pitch, comes up empty. It's nothing and one. Rojas 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Here's the next one from Abke to line drive down the left field line, but it twists foul. Foul by about three feet and went rolling all the way toward the corner where Kelly picked it up. waits to bat next and Rojas takes that one high and outside one and two as Abke continues to work 
See a little bit of blue between the clouds up there. It's not quite dark yet. Pitch on the way. That's outside. Count even on Rojas with one out in the bottom of the fourth. Travis locked in a 1-1 tie with Seven Lakes, but Seven Lakes leads the series one game to none. Here's the pitch. That's high. Full count on Ashley Rojas. Ashley might get something really, really good here on three and one. Abke brings it, and it's outside, ball four. The runner on with one away. Casey Perkins, K-A-C-Y. She stands pretty straight up in the batter's box, crowds the plate from the right-handed side, takes one outside for ball one. That one's, well, Casey thought it was inside. She backed up, but it was a called strike. So Amy Abke, the complete game winner in game one threw 106 pitches, just three hits allowed and threw 73% strikes. Throws the change up and Perkins swings way out in front and she's down one and two. Both crowds really into it. That's a called strike at the letters and Casey's out, two away. Still have Rojas at first base. Now back to the top and Ariel Kowalewski. Pitch on the way, outside. She spells her last name just like my good friend, friend James Kowaleski, but she's Kowalewski. Here's a pitch that's a strike. We count now one and one. She wears the silver shoes. Here's the pitch. Fouled back. That's strike two. Kowalewski ready. Here's a pitch that just misses outside. I thought she'd be heading back to the dugout. Fortunately for Travis, it was called a ball and the count is two and two. Abke ready, brings it. That is down the left field line, but it's gonna slice foul. Kowalewski with an opportunity to hit a gapper and put her team ahead. That's high and away for ball three. So again, you can't leave until the ball crosses home plate, but Rojas needs to break no matter what on this 3-2 pitch with two away. Here it comes. Check swing and it's ball four. Two runners on for Travis. So Kowalewski has gotten on every time. Base hit, hit by pitch, and walked. Riley Westmoreland hit a foul pop-up her first time, but she's got a runner in scoring position. That's Ashley Rojas, and we'll see what she can do. Runs forward on that one again. Does not offer at it, but it's a called strike. Riley doesn't wear batting gloves but she does wear the gray New Balances. Here's the pitch. She was running toward that one, took it outside for a ball. And I'm wondering if she ever takes a stationary swing. Open stance. 
Abke brings it. And a running swing and back into the screen. One and two is the count. One to one, Travis and Seven Lakes. The Tigers have to win or their playoff run is over in the first round. Here's the pitch. Another swing while she was on the run and it's back into the net. Westmoreland takes the slow, low practice swings. Now Brent, he, she looks at that one and pulls the bat back. Appeal to the infield umpire who's standing behind third base and he says no swing. So the count is now two and two and Westmoreland is making Abke work very hard to get her out. Down and in for a ball, the count is full. And the runners will get that full speed break as soon as the ball crosses the front of the plate. Westmoreland likes to stretch before she steps in every time. Abke brings it. And that hit her. And the bases are loaded. Oh, this could be a big moment of truth and it's Kennedy Clark. Kennedy hopping up and down a little bit. She looks excited to be there. The bags are full of Tigers with two outs and a 1-1 game in the bottom of the fourth. Clark looks at the first pitch upstairs, ball one. Clark is one for two tonight. She hit a double. Now it'd be a good time for another double. Here's the pitch. And that is uh, over but low. Right down the middle of the plate but low. And that brings Katie Spencer out of the dugout. I don't think she's talking to the home plate umpire. I think she might be saying something to her catcher, Wingate. Here's the 2-0 pitch and fouled back. And as she steps out of the box, Clark is kind of visualizing what would be a better movement with her left arm to make the next swing really pay off. One and two the count, she's back in there. Lefty swinger, Abke brings it. That's high and it's three and one. And there's no place to put Kennedy Clark. Clark gigs in, here comes the pitch. Downstairs, ball four, Travis leads it two to one. Rojas comes on home with the go ahead. And the inning isn't over. Maddie Morris comes up. She's got a hit tonight. Morris near the back of the right-handed box with the open stance. Abke gets her sign from Wingate, brings it. Strike on the outside corner. Base is still loaded. Travis has just taken a two to one lead on a bases loaded walk. The pitch to Morris and she hits it up in the air and Wingate finds it, makes the catch. Inning over, but Travis does get the go ahead run. They do, however, leave the bases loaded. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com with the top of the fifth.
GetAGreatGig.com presents Gary Horn of HornSolutions.net on the most important factors in starting a business. Number one, where will you get the necessary capital? Two, you will probably not make money for some period of time. Prepare a conservative model of expected cost and revenues. Three, are you willing to work long hours for no pay and make sure all employees are paid? For more free career and job search advice, log on to GetAGreatGig.com. Hello, I'm Gary Horn, CEO of Horn Solutions. Our team of experienced accounting, finance, and IT professionals have delivered solutions to Houston businesses for over three decades. Our project group provides services ranging from assisting with mergers, acquisitions, and integrations to interim staffing. Our executive search group provides full-time placements for accounting, finance, and IT positions. Let Horn Solutions help you meet the challenges your company faces. Visit hornsolutions.net. This VibeFortBend.com presentation of Fort Bend County Playoff Softball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity is a proud supporter of Fort Bend and Greater Houston High School sports on VibeFortBend.com. With the new Xfinity Sports Zone app, watch multiple games at once and check live stats and scores while watching another game. It's the best sports entertainment experience with Xfinity X1. And by First Tire and Automotive, make sure your vehicles are in shape for the spring. First Tire and Automotive has locations in First Colony, Greatwood, Katy Cinco Ranch, and on Eldridge Road in Sugarland. All four of those locations are open on Saturdays. For the best prices on tires, go to firsttireandauto.com. Welch to lead it off for Seven Lakes as they trail 2-1 to one in the top of the fifth. First pitch from Ibarra is in the air, foul ground, and it hits on top of the Travis dugout. I can only imagine what the field looks like at Travis right now. They did tarp it, but the natural grass surface there is just too wet to play. Swung on and missed, it's changed up. Nothing in two on Welch. Ibarra steps back onto the pitcher's rubber. Windmills and brings it. Tried to make her chase one outside. She did not, and it's one and two. You ever heard of Murphy's Law? I had an encounter with Murphy's Law today. The one-two pitch is outside the strike zone, but Welch chases it, and it's a swinging strikeout to start the top of the fifth. So I made great plans. As soon as I heard Travis was going to host game two, I got Rick Grimm, the baseball coach, to open up the softball field. I put my broadcast table in there. I put up three signs, and I was ready to go. First pitch, swung on and missed by Sauer. Sauer's 0 for 1. Pitch on the way, she swung and missed at that one too. Ibarra really heating up. Pitch on the way. Outside corner, almost a strike. The ump started to move his right arm and then kept it at his side. Ibarra rocks and fires. Check swing, did she go around? No, she did not. And the umpire, you know, we got three umpires with this crew, so you can really get a decent appeal call on either a right-handed or left-handed batter. Sauer ready for the 2-2. She swung and missed at that one. And for the second time in the inning, Ibarra gets a batter to chase a pitch outside the strike zone. And that is seven strikeouts for Rachel Ibarra. Now Megan Kelly, the left fielder. Near the front of the right-handed batter's box. 
Two outs, base is empty, and it's an easy roller, but it goes between first and second. It was just equidistant between Camacho and Morris, and nothing they could do. And it's into right field for a two-out hit. Just the third hit of the game for the Spartans. Now back to the top of the order and McKenzie Stutz. She bats barehanded also. First pitch to her, strike outside corner. Ibarra ready, pitch on the way. Outside and it's one and one. Clark thought about a snap throw down to first. Did not let it go. Pitch on the way. High fly ball center field. Should be a fairly easy play for Rojas. She's got it. And that'll do it for the Seven Lake Spartans in the top of the fifth. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. We'll continue to the bottom of the fifth. Travis fighting for their playoff lives, leading two to one over Seven Lakes. First Tire and Automotive will shower you in savings in April. Make sure you're not caught saying the wrong S word when it starts raining because you can't see out of your windshield. Safety first to get you to and from the big game. Check out these great savings. Wiper blades, buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free on select contour beam windshield wipers. Purchase four select BF Goodrich, Goodyear, General, or Uniroyal tires with a premium installation package and wheel alignment and save $100. First Town Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. Barra, Garza, and Camacho to come to bat for your Travis Tigers in the bottom of inning number five. They have a two to one lead on Seven Lakes in a game that the Tigers have to win or it'll be Seven Lakes advancing to the second round of the playoffs. By the way, if this game sounds different to you, well, there's nobody announcing anything in the press box and there's no music. That doesn't happen very often these days. Tompkins has a 5-2 lead in the fourth on Ridgepoint. That is at Tompkins, and the Panthers have to win if they are to survive. We need to check on Katie and Austin as well. First pitch swinging, Ibarra, lazy fly ball to right field. Johnson makes the catch, and there's one away after one pitch. Lauren Garza, who got the Travis Tigers on the board with a solo homer, stands in. Abke ready, windmills and brings it home, it's high. Lauren likes to step out and take a couple of hard practice swings, kind of fidgets with the bat, regrips. Moves the fingers, now she's ready. Abke brings it, down and in. That made Lauren do a little dance. Next pitch. That is a line drive to right field and it is in the glove of Johnson. Looked like that might get past her for a second there, but she was tracking it very well. Two outs and the base is empty. Emily Camacho. Emily's 0 for 2. Looks at the first pitch and that squirts out of Wingate's mitt. Abke, same pre-pitch routine. 
change up, but a line drive to third base and Abel right there to squeeze it. So Travis is done in the fifth. We'll go to the sixth. Tigers on top, two to one. Must win situation for Travis. This is VibeFortBend.com. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid, or two kids, or three kids. Especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. Thank you, Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugar Land, helping us take care of business all year. In school year 2020-2021, we have brought you well over 100 live broadcasted events. And the most fun are the playoffs, and Travis has a one-run lead in this one as we go to the sixth. It'll be Wingate, Abke, and Raby for Seven Lakes, and Wingate swings at the first pitch, fouls it straight back. Wingate officially 0 for 1 tonight. Ibarra brings it. Outside corner strike, and it's nothing in two. I've got Ibarra at seven strikes out, strikeouts, but the game changer says six, and there's a tapper foul outside third. Wingate still down 0-2. Oh, so close. But it's outside for ball one. Wind starting to blow harder from the right field foul pole to the one on the left. And that one is a high pop-up that goes foul and almost gets over the backstop. It really takes a lot to get over the backstop because not only is it high, I'm thinking it's at least 50 feet, but it's only about 20 feet from home plate and the baselines. Swung on and missed. Down goes Wingate. Clark has to throw down to first to complete the put out. Camacho makes the catch there. And there's one down in the sixth. If Travis can hang on here, then we will say goodbye quickly. And we'll recharge the iPad, if you know what I mean, and we'll be back for game three, if, if that is necessary. First pitch to Abke is high for ball one. Abke's one for two. Pitch on the way. That's outside, Clark tried to frame it, but the ump was correct, quite correct. Stutz has scored the only run for Seven Lake Spartans, swung on and missed by Abke. There's a 
A good pitch, but it was not a strike. Ibarra just trying to get Abke to go after it. Next pitch, just got a piece to stay alive. And the count is now full on Abke. Ibarra ready, windmills, and here comes the pitch. It's downstairs, ball four, Abke at first. This could be a huge moment. Becca Raby plays first base. for two in tonight's ball game. She was one for three last night. Swings and misses at the first pitch and it was a foul tip off of the very end of the bat. Camacho and Kowaluski pinching in on the corners. There's a strike on the outside corner and a throw down but back in is Abke. Rachel Ibarra pitching like a machine, just doesn't seem to get tired. There's a swing and a miss. And it was a foul tip, but it was caught by Clark anyway. That is either the eighth or the ninth strikeout for Ibarra. And two down, Abke still at first. Now Emily Johnson's got to do something Ibarra brings it off the end of the bat, off the net on the right. It's been a long day because of what the Travis and Seven Lakes coaches had to do to get ready for this one. Soft liner to second. Matty Morris has it. That'll do it. No runs on no hits. No errors and one runner left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Travis hanging on two to one. They've got to have this game too so we can keep playing softball in 2021. We'll be back. Fast Wi-Fi. You use it to connect just about everything, which means having really fast Wi-Fi matters a lot. That's why Xfinity is breaking the gig barrier and introducing Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's a big deal. It's a big deal for streaming big games, having big meetings, and making big plans. It's a big deal for families with one kid, or two kids, or three kids. Especially if there's one kid who has enough devices for 10 kids. It's a big deal for gamers who are streaming while someone else is posting about their virtual spin class. And yet, it's also a big deal for a quiet Friday night in. So get in on Wi-Fi speeds faster than a gig. That's more than enough speed to power every device in the house. Can your internet do that? Introducing gig speeds over Wi-Fi. It's the fastest Wi-Fi you can get, and it's only from Xfinity. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store to learn more. Restrictions apply. Actual speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Ashley Rojas leads off for Travis in the bottom of the sixth. The Tigers lead two to one. An insurance run or two or more would be fine, but the way these pitchers are throwing, I don't think we're gonna see any offensive explosions. Pitch from Abke, soft liner, and it's caught by the first base player, Raby. One away. So even if Seven Lakes does manage to tie the game or take the lead, in the top of the seventh. Travis will have the last at bat. First pitch swinging, Casey Perkins back into the net, nothing in one. Wind blowing harder, right to left, Perkins ready. That's inside for a ball or low. In any case, it's one and one. Outside for a ball. Abke 
Mackey ready to bring the two and one. Perkins, another foul back. These games move along quickly when you got the high backstop and it's really close to the foul lines. Pitcher always gets the ball back quickly. Here's a soft liner through the middle and in the center field. Casey Perkins. Runner on with only one out and back to the top and it's Ariel Kowalewski. Takes a deep breath. Now steps in quickly. Silver shoes, toes almost on the line. First pitch swinging and sliced foul over to the left. Nice fastball though by Abke. Now Ariel steps out, kind of goes through the hip motion that will get the bat around. Slightly open stance and they play her straight away. There's a change up and she lets it go by, ball outside. Now we're ready for the next one. Kowalewski swings and another sliced foul off the net on the left. Megan Kelly comes out of left field, which seems kind of appropriate. Picks up the ball, gets it back to Abke. 0 and 2 the count. Kowalewski, another slice, and this one was hit harder and lower and didn't go foul quite so quickly. This time Abke taking her time, now brings it. Kowalewski down the left field line again, slicing foul, but this time it hits the ground before it hits the wall. Every time she swings and goes foul down the left field line, it gets a little closer to being fair. Now she does have the left toe on the line of the batter's box. Pitch on the way, downstairs, good eye by Ariel. Ariel, a name made famous and popular by the movie Footloose and also the movie The Little Mermaid. Abke gets the sign, brings the 2-2, way up high, and it's 3-2. and two. Casey Perkins hit a soft liner. They got through the middle for a base hit. She's on with one away, and that pitch is high. Kowalewski works a walk. Now the way the wind is blowing, if you're thinking about power and thinking, hmm, what about a home run? Seems very unlikely if it's a left-handed pull hitter, a right-handed pull hitter, the wind might help it. Here's Riley Westmoreland. Running forward, lets it go by, high for a ball. Riley ready, runs forward and takes a strike. She's one for four in the series. Running, hits it foul off the net on the left side. They count now one and two, Travis leading two to one here in the bottom of the sixth having to win to keep the series alive and push it to a game three. Westmoreland ready and swings and fouls it off the plate and it trickles back into foul territory. By the way, a lot of people don't seem to know this. Uh, a batted ball can hit the plate or even behind the plate, but if it spins into fair territory, it's a fair ball. And that could have been one of those, but she swung and it 
stayed in foul ground. So Perkins goes back to second and Kowalewski goes back to first. Westmoreland likes to stretch, holds the bat high above her head. Pitch on the way, swung on and missed. And that'll be the second out. First base is occupied, so even the ball, even though the ball skipped away from Wingate for a moment, it was of no consequence. Kennedy Clark would love to deliver. Bats with no gloves. Here comes the pitch. Outside for a ball. If she can reach, then it would be Maddie Morris next. Clark swings, ground ball to second, and they throw her out at first base. Welch to Raby, and we go to the seventh. Travis clinging to the two to one lead that if they can hang on, will put them into game three and prolong their championship dreams. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireandAuto.com Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. Rachel Ibarra goes back out there. She's only allowed three hits and just one run. Her teammates have played errorless defense behind her. They lead it two to one. And they are ready to close this one out and play game three about 30 minutes after the end of this one. But the Seven Lake Spartans have other ideas. Ashley Abel will lead it off, and it's Haley Welch and Cecilia Sauer. Sauer, by the way, is the designated player, and she's in place of Chinea Uzoa, who's in right field. Travis fans making plenty of noise. In the fifth inning, Ridge Point has tied Tompkins. Ridge Point and Tompkins tied 5-5. And that game is in the fifth. Ridge Point trying to prolong that series. Okay, here we go. Abel in the box. First pitch swinging. It's a line drive into left field. Quickly getting it back in is Westmoreland. And wow, that's what you want for Seven Lakes. I mean, first pitch swinging, very aggressive. And the tying run is at first base. And now we're going to have a pinch hitter. It's Wallman. Jaden, no, just a second. Sorry. There's a pitch, and it's strike one. Cameron Wallman has come on to pinch hit. There she shows bunt, lets it go by. She's pinch hitting for Haley Welch. Wallman right on the front of the box with the elevated left heel. Oh, that was close, but it's outside for a ball and the count's one and two.
Cameron Wallman, open stance. Called strike and down she goes. One away. Now Cecilia Sauer, the designated player, steps up, looks down at coach Katie Spencer. Knows what the battle plan is supposed to be. Very wide open stance. Right-handed hitter, and Ibarra brings her a fastball and she fouls it back. Kowalewski and Camacho pinching in at the corners. Ibarra rocks in, fires, change up. Tapper foul, trickles over into foul territory on the left. Nothing in two now. Sauer ready, and it's a ground ball to second. Morris picks up, flips to second for one, and that's all they get. Everything's okay. Lauren Garza got knocked over as the runner came in. Nobody's mad, it's good. It's just good hard softball. But Seven Lakes is down to its final batter as they try to win this game two and sweep the series. And I think they're making a change here. The Travis girls are gonna go to the circle and talk things over. Megan Kelly's gonna bat. There is no change. It's just Katie Spencer talking to Megan Kelly about what she wants her to try and do. The infielders and Kennedy Clark have had their little talk with Rachel Ibarra. I'm sure it was very strong encouragement, every single syllable. Kelly ready, first pitch to her. Strike on the outside corner. Rachel Ibarra and the Travis Tigers trying to finish this thing off. Pitch on the way, ground ball to second, Morris flips, got the out, it's over. Travis wins game two. And we will have a game three, folks, on VipeFortBend.com. So here are your totals very quickly. For the Seven Lake Spartans, one run on four hits, no errors committed. By the way, I wanted to see how many they left on base. They left four on base. And for the Travis Tigers, two runs on five hits. They made no errors. And the Tigers left 10 runners on base. Wow, I didn't know they had left that many. But the winning pitcher getting the complete game is Rachel Ibarra. So now she has a complete game victory as Amy Abke had in game one. And these two th teams are gonna play a game three. So I'll sign off for now, Roger Smith on VipeFortBend.com, and we'll see you in about a half an hour.